just sampling some milk from my farm this morning. And we're going to do something we never do and show always. We're going to test this for butter fat. I always tell everybody, we bring the milk in and dump it in here, weigh it and sample it. But nobody knows what sampling means. So let's go in the factory and just find out. Go to my little lab and uh, let's see how it's done. And what we're going to do here is we're going to test for butter fat by using the Babcock tester. And this tester was took a long time to get an accurate one that works every time. And Mr. Babcock is a is a doctor. He got his doctorate in, in uh, Germany, but he's born in New York. And he decided to come to UW Madison, Wisconsin, to finish his career which lasted 48 years there. So he's the man that decided to devise this. And what I have is here is the milk I just sampled. I have 10 on the bottle, number 10 on the cap, so nothing can be mixed up. The 10 goes on the ledger of my book for the farmer. Everybody gets a number. So we're going to start our measurements of milk and a reagent and uh, we're, uh, I'm going to talk about a little bit more while I'm spinning the centrifuge. I can explain more because there's a lot of time put into that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take 17.6 milliliters of milk. And we, in the light here, you can see that, uh, so the line is 17.6. And there we go, right at the bottom of the meniscus. And put it into our testing bottle. This bottle took many years just to get the right size and the right graduations. And it wasn't easy. Blow it all out. To make sure all the milk is in there. By the way, this milk was at uh, 70 degrees, which is what it's called for, 70 degrees. And our reagent is sulfuric acid, and we're using 17.5 milliliters of sulfuric acid, which is pretty much like battery acid. Exactly, actually the same thing. And we're using this because it'll dissolve the protein and the casein, which is the basis of cheese, but it will not dissolve the fat. And the fat, you'll see after a while, it'll come to the top, and we'll be able to measure it. You don't want to get this too much on your hands. I would say probably none of it. But, so here we have it. It went to the bottom. So now we're just going to slightly shake. I'm going to get it just the blood mixed in. I don't want to have all this milk going up in here right away. I want it to stay down below. But you can see the colors changing. It's starting to dissolve proteins and the, and the casein. Another, another mineral for that is calcium also. So now we're just going to shake it until we get a nice... Ah, see so it gets to be over 140 degrees. The reaction is so great and it burns up. It's, uh, and it's something you don't... You always want to point your vial test bottle away from everybody. Because it could come out once in a while. But we're going to get this stirred up good to make sure it's all dissolved before we start the centrifuge. So, now we're ready to centrifuge. The 
this centrifuge took a lot of time too, just to, just to get it devised that everybody could use it from farm to factory. So I'm going to start spinning and what I'm looking for just about a second for each turn here will give me my right speed above with the gear reduction one turn is quite a bit quite a few turns on top didn't bring my watch today, so we're going to have to guess a little bit at the time. Generally, five minutes is what should be used, but uh, it might be more time than we have allowed. allowed so. But we just want to get the basics on how to use the Babcock test to measure fast, so we can take this test. It'll be in percentage-wise. 3, 3, 2, something like this, and uh, take that times the pounds of milk that he has, and that will give you the pounds of butter fat, and that factory can pay on the butter fat and the weight of the milk. The reason this was started, a lot of factories noticed before 1890 that some days, with these farmers, some farmers weren't picked up every day. Some, but some days, with these farmers, we get more cheese, and then the next day comes in, the cheese is less with the other farmers. What can this be, you know? Generally, it's because of different breeds of cows. We've got a whole scene from Jersey and Jerseys. It's almost like two different animals. A uh, whole scene is, can, can be around right three and a half, three, seven percent, and the, and the Jersey and Jerseys, they get up in the five percent fat. So those guys never really got paid for their fat and, and the other ones did get the same payment. So, by 1890, Mr. Babcock came up with this test. He didn't have a patent on it. He didn't want to put a patent on it so everybody could use it. Farm and commercial use in the, the milk bottling and in cheese making. I don't think we have five minutes, but uh, in this case, we're going to be all right. We even have some instructions here on how to do it. It's pretty simple. And it was made to be very simple. And a lot of tests were made. Uh, a lot of tests were made in, in prior to 1890, 1870s, but they never were accurate very elaborate machinery and it never was accurate and this is accurate and they're still using this with the new machinery you still have to go back to this test to make sure everything is standardized this can be done with cream also we use a lot of different bottle, quite a bit bigger bottle because there is so much butter, fat, and cream. But same procedure, different levels of cream, different levels of sulfuric acid. It's coming up already so it doesn't get burnt too dark and I will spin again it's supposed to be two minutes but I think we're going to go a little less than that keep this segment where we want to today we use they use electric spinning motors and Closed 
capsule so in case a bottle would break, you wouldn't have this acid flying all over. So, but this, this is the first, first design. The centrifugal force is forcing the heavy part of milk, the material, the minerals that are heavy are protein and calcium and casein, casein and the butter fat is light, so the butter fat is constantly being pushed up to the top of our graduation neck, so we'll be able to read it. Imagine this job on the farm was for the kids. Keep them busy, get nice strong arms. I think we're done with that. Now we're gonna bring this fat up into the column where the graduations are and we're gonna see just exactly what this farmer has for fat content in his milk. Now, we're going to bring this fat, that's very hot, we're going to bring this fat column over this just a little bit more. Oh, a little too far, but that's all right. And we're going to spin it again. The reason I had filled up the other bottles that I weren't, wasn't using is the balance would be so far off that we'd probably be breaking all this glass on our table. So we're trying to keep it all the same level. And if you don't have enough samples to put in, equalize that water. see on this, even on this piece of paper that came from way back from Babcock, is we use this to measure the level of butter fat. And then we, now I spilled a little too full before, but uh, so what I'm doing is I'm going from the very bottom, I usually use my thumb my ears, the very bottom to the very top. Which should be, let's see where we got it right here. And this would come out to, right there would be, get the pointed edge down here. So this would be 2.6, and it would have been more than that, but I did spill some before by overrunning it because it wasn't a, I'd be more careful with a true test. So this is about 2.6. These are two, de two, de two, uh, two degrees per, each increment is two degrees. So this is 2.6% fat. We take the 2.6% fat times the farm's weight, and that would be our butter fat for, the, for that farmer. And uh, that's how we do a better job of equally paying each farmer with the various different cows and animals that have for different tests and uh, uh, it was something that was irreplaceable and uh, by 1925 the United States declared it as the master test for testing butter fat and uh, anyway that's what Babcock did and he was uh, 
pretty smart, pretty smart guy to do that thing. So now we're using it all the time. So until next time. Thank <laughs> you.